In the last video, we talked about the course and how things are going to work. And I wanted to I wanted to do another video and talk to you a bit about what's happening this week. And I wanted to get you started on how we're going to work and the tools and places to look for things. So let's talk. First of all, I've posted your addendum. So the addendum I have here and you can uh, download it from Blackboard and you can take a look at it. And it talks about the um, the assessment summary, you know, what how we're going to be uh, doing our work. And I'm going to talk more about this in a moment, so I won't go over it right now. Course policies. And then it has this weekly schedule and the weekly schedule will help you know what to expect, what's coming and especially around due dates. But uh, a major part of how we're gonna work is that each week I'm going to have a lab for you to do. Almost every week I'll have a lab for you to do. And also you're gonna be working on assignments. And in both cases, I'm gonna have you, have you writing lots of open source code. So nothing re really happens in this course unless you're doing things. So the, the idea of this course is for you to really experiment with open source get involved, uh, practice a whole bunch of technical skills, build confidence, build experience, etc. So the, the weekly schedule is going to take us through lots and lots of topics, things that I want to make sure that you learn how to do really well. And it's also going to, you know, help you to take the time to develop working on getting more and more comfortable writing lots of code. So the addendum is there and you can take a look through it and just pay attention to it in terms of what's coming up. So in terms of, of how we're gonna work, um, what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna like right now I'm talking to you from a video and I'm gonna do a lot of this. I'm going to record videos and code walkthroughs, case studies and so on. And I'm going to post those at the beginning of the week. So at the beginning of the week, I'm gonna put everything into GitHub. So we have a repository that we're gonna put all of the content for the course in, and I will um, send you links so you know where it is, and I'll also give you access so that you can edit it and you can work on it with me. So inside of here, what should you be aware of? Well, I have the, um, I have the, the subject outline and information about grading, et cetera, has all been placed in here. So, you know, what everything's worth, what the due dates are, et cetera, has already been posted. And I also have a wiki inside of the GitHub repo. And a lot of the work that we're gonna do is gonna happen in this wiki. And over the coming weeks, we'll fill this up with more and more pages. So each week, I'm going to be adding a page for the notes and all of the, the lab, all of the to-do items, everything that you need to know about for that week. I'm also going to put your releases in here, your assignments that you have to work on, and so on. So these things that I'm going to post for you, I expect you to work on them through the week. And I don't know how you like to work. So I know that some of my students really enjoy having things scheduled. And so if you're someone who enjoys a schedule and you want to you know, be able to slot everything in, then I would encourage you to use the weekly, uh, the weekly schedule that we have for the classes. You can use that time to watch the videos that I'm gonna put up, to uh, work on the labs, to work on your assignments and so on. However, I also wanna build a lot of flexibility into the course because the work that we're doing uh, is there's a lot of it, uh, and I'm going to expect that you're constantly programming, you're working on things, you're collaborating with people, and a lot of that stuff is hard to fit into, you know, a couple of two-hour blocks. So you may decide to watch these videos at night. You might decide to do them, you know, uh, in the mornings because you're a morning person, or maybe you're in a different time zone, and for you it makes a lot of sense to do them at 3 a.m. Toronto time. So whatever works for you, I want you to find a rhythm and you can stick to it. It doesn't have to be the same as everybody else's rhythm. Open source is fundamentally, um, it, it, it's a philosophy that comes out of the internet. And one of the main aspects of the internet is that it's asynchronous. So people working on the internet live in every country and time zone in the world. So the idea that there is fixed time that we can schedule everything and it's going to work for everybody doesn't make any sense. So we're going to do the same kind of thing in this course. 
Um, I'm going to ask you to get involved in open source projects. You might be working with people in India or in New Zealand or in whatever, uh, in England, and people are in all different time zones and you're trying to get your code reviewed, you're trying to talk to people, and you have to, you know, you have to think in terms of being, you know, being involved in global projects. So the material that I'm going to put up on YouTube, the stuff that's in the wiki, all of the pull requests and repositories and things that we're going to do on GitHub, all of it's going to be done asynchronously. For our synchronous time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make use of Slack. And I don't know if you've used Slack before, but I'm purposely going to choose it because many companies use it and it's very common for people in the open source world to use it. So I know you're probably using Teams and a lot of other, other courses. Some of you will have used Discord or you'll use, like there's so many different competing systems. But for this course, I want to use Slack and I want to get all of you on and using it. And our Slack is a place where you can come and you can ask all kinds of questions. You can collaborate with your colleagues. There, I, I want to encourage you that there really aren't stupid questions on here. So I, I want you to be brave. I want you to get in here and start talking with, with people that you don't know. Like right now, I can see that there's 400 people in this uh, OSD 600 DPS 909 channel. So you've got people that are currently taking the course. You have people who took the course years and years and years ago, and they're still inside the Slack channel. And there's lots of people that you can connect with. So if you find that you need help or you want to work with other people, Slack is where we will coordinate this. And it's where you can get a hold of me. So if you want to talk to me about something, I'm almost always available here. You can come and chat with me. And you can also obviously email me. You can uh, chat with me in private chats if that's something you want to do. And we can obviously set up times to talk privately. Um, we could use, you know, through Teams or, or something like that if you need to have like a video call or an audio call or something. But by and large, I want to challenge you to try and use Slack and GitHub and so on. I want you to try and work in the open. So I, it, this is not going to be comfortable at first. You aren't going to enjoy me saying to you, I want you to go out there and show people all your mistakes and show people that you don't know how to do X, Y, and Z. And that's going to feel uncomfortable. But I want you to understand that there are huge benefits from a community of people getting together and talking about what they're doing, showing each other their code, collaborating on things, being part of a larger community. So that's really that's really a big part of what we're going to be trying to do. OK, so let's let's talk a little bit about what's up, um, you know, for for this week one. What kinds of things do we have? So if you look at week one, what you're going to see is you're going to see links to a number of videos. So there's a course introduction video and there's this video, which currently doesn't exist <laughs> because I'm in the process of recording it. So I will post the link to that video here. There's also a link to a, an explainer video about copyright in Canada. And in addition, I've got a number of readings. So each week I'm going to have videos for you. I'm going to have readings that I want you to do, and I want you to work through those on your own. When you're doing the readings and when you're watching these videos, I've posted a bunch of questions that I'd like you to think about. So we're going to be talking about copyright. We're going to be starting to think about licenses. I want you to start to think about uh, the ownership of the things that you create, the websites that you create, the code that you create. I want you to start thinking about yourself as participating in this, uh, in, in the world of copyright and what it means. So. Begin doing the readings to try and answer the questions. Number two, I want you to get on Slack and I want you to introduce yourself. So how do I join Slack? You can click on the link to go to our Slack workspace, Seneca Open Source Slack, and then you can use your Seneca email address in order to uh, get added. So you'll have to create an account and use your Seneca email to do that, and then you'll be able to join. And when you first join, you'll get dropped into a number of channels. You'll probably get dropped into the general channel and maybe into the telescope channel and maybe into the OSD 600 DPS 909 channel. So this OSD 600 channel, DPS 909, that's probably where you should start. And it's a good place for you to go because that's where all the other students in the course are going to be and you'll be able to find one another. 
So all of my sections, all of you, you know, there's close to uh, 60 or so of you, 65. So all of you will be in here and you'll be able to find one another and uh, work together. Get yourself on to Slack. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to uh, work on the lab for the week, which is I want you to get set up with your blog. So I have a page here on the wiki about what I'm looking for. So the first thing I want you to note is that this is due by Friday at midnight. So make sure your labs are almost always gonna be due on the Friday of the week that I assign them. There's a couple of labs that are bigger and I'll sometimes give you two weeks to do them, but for the most part, you're gonna be expected to have this done by the end of the week, Friday at midnight. So sometime in the week, get it done, get it submitted. So I'll let you read through this on your own, but I wanna say that I am interested in having you learn how to write about the work that you do. When you get done this course, if I Google your name, I wanna find really interesting posts that you've made about all the technical work that you've done, the open source projects that you've contributed to attached to your name. And I wanna you know, land on your blog. So blogging is a way for you to start to insert yourself into the web to become part of this larger community of people who are working on interesting things. I want you to think about yourself, not just as a student who's reading things on the web. I want you to think about yourself as a developer who's creating things on the internet, who's actually building the internet. Having a blog is a big part of that. Being able to showcase the work that you're doing, talk about things, etc. So if you already have a blog, you can continue to use your blog, but I find that most students don't blog these days, and so you need to set one up. And I would recommend that you use uh, probably dev.to, but you can use Blogger or WordPress or Medium. You can use anything you want, I don't care. But if you don't know what to use, I would probably use dev.to to set up your blog. And um, it's, a, it's another good uh, community for people who are just getting started blogging. After you've created a blog for yourself, I want you to create a GitHub account. If you already have a GitHub account, you can use that. If you've never made a GitHub account before, go and make one and set up your GitHub profile, get yourself uh, all set up so that people can find who you are. Like, um, this is mine. And, you know, I've got different repositories that, I've, that I'm working on right now, different organizations that I'm part of. Um, you know, you can find different repositories that I've worked in, etc. I've got a picture. If you're comfortable putting up a picture, it doesn't have to be a picture of you. It could be a cartoon character. It could be whatever you're comfortable with. So I'm not asking you to share more than, than you want to, but you can create a, start to create a persona for yourself as a developer. I'm a developer working on open source projects. These are the kinds of things I'm doing and you can throw that all up on GitHub and people can find you and look at the things that, you know, the things that you're working on. So set up your blog, set up your GitHub account and your profile. Um, next thing I want you to do is I want you to go check out the trending repositories on GitHub. So when you go to GitHub's trending page, there are all kinds of repositories that people right now are putting, they're starring these repositories. And if you're interested in any particular language, like let's say, for example, you're really interested in Python or TypeScript or C++. So if I click on C++, what is trending in C++? And you can see the kinds of, like there's all different projects that come up. Um, same thing if I, you know, if I'm interested in web programming, I'm interested in JavaScript programming and it comes up. I can also change when it was trending. So things that have been trending in the past month. And if you're interested, you can also change the language. So I know that many of you speak more than one language. If you're interested in working with a community that speaks Korean or Portuguese or French, you could look for, um, you could look for repositories in other languages. And you'll find that it's more and more common for projects to be in other languages. Like for example, a lot of uh, people that are working on Vue.js, uh, really huge, huge in Asia. And so lots of different Asian languages um, for with, with repositories that are popping up. So I would encourage you to think globally and look for opportunities to find interesting, interesting kinds of projects. Like if I was doing this today, here's a really interesting project by Google. Google has created this project. 
and it's a tool for writing uh, scripts. It's um, here's what they look like. So it's it's not it's not bash scripting. It's like if you had bash scripts and JavaScript kind of bolted together. And so you can do really interesting things where you can write this kind of hybrid of a, of a shell script, but write it in JavaScript. So this is a very, very interesting project. It's pretty active. Like you can see that um, the last update to it was five days ago. And you, know, you might get interested in this and want to talk about it. So what I'm looking for you to do is I want you to find a project that interests you in the trending pages on GitHub. I don't care what it is, but I want you to pick it. And then I want you to go ahead and fork that repository. So for me, if I was gonna fork this repository here, I would click the button here to fork it into my own account. I want you to copy that project into your list of repositories that you have. And I want you to learn how to do that. And then I want you to write about it. So I want you to talk about the project that you chose, talk about who you are, why are you taking open source? I want your first blog post to be an introduction of you, the kinds of technology that you're passionate about or the things that you're interested in, some of the stuff that you, you know, noticed. Like, I'd be interested in knowing where you're working this term. Like, are you in Toronto? Are you, uh, are you working are you, are you in Germany? Are you, I know with uh, the pandemic, Lots of people are scattered all over the place right now and they're working remote. So where are you? Um, how, how big is our open source community that we're, that we're building right now? So I want you to write up this blog post so that um, you have your first post up. And the way that you submit all of this work to me is I want you to send me an email. So when you're done, I need all of this information, your name, your blog URL, your blog feed URL, and your GitHub username. And I'm gonna use that in order to um, put you into, I have a page here of all the people that are taking the course, and I wanna put up all the information for, uh, for each of you so that everybody can find each other. And I also wanna add you to our Telescope project, which is a blog aggregation service where we take all of the blogs of everybody who is working on open source and they all get aggregated together into a single blog. This is an open source project that students in the course have been building for the last number of years, and I want you to become part of it. I want you to A, get your blog on there, and then B, also have a chance to fix, fix some bugs and, uh, and work on the project with us. Okay, so that is setting up your blog, okay? so. Do the readings, answer those questions, get on Slack, number two. Number three, I want you to set up your blog, set up your GitHub, and I want you to pick a project, write about it, introduce yourself, send me the, all the details so I can get you added to, the, to the, the community. The last thing I'll talk about here for this week is that your first assignment has been posted. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for your first release is I'm gonna ask all of you to work on the same project, basically the same project. And for the rest of the term, I'm not really gonna do this, but for this very first project, I'm gonna force you all to solve the same programming problem. And then for every other assignment that we do, you'll be able to have a lot more freedom. You'll be able to work on all different things. Some of you will work on game engines and some of you will work on web frameworks and some of you will work on testing libraries. It, like there's so many things you could work on. But for this very first one, what I want you to do is I want you to build a static site generator. So I want to explore this space of static site generators, which is a massive space. Like I went looking today, um, I, this is a site that has like a list of all of them and there's you know over 300 of them here, people who've written all these static site generators. And it's really popular right now um, building static site generators. And it's something that I want to later on in the course, I wanna play with, especially I wanna work with this one from Facebook called Docusaurus. And I wanna use it to run a project later on where we're gonna be working on converting all of the C and C++ notes that Seneca has into a progressive web app. So I'll say more about that in future weeks, 
But I wanted to get you started thinking about working with static site generators. So this first release, I want you to build a command line tool that lets you take a bunch of text files and I want it to produce a website from those text files. So this first release, you'll notice that I'm calling it release 0.1, is gonna be very basic. You've got two weeks to do it. It's due um, not this Friday, but the, 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 the coming Friday, so Friday, September 17th. And what I want is I want you to build me a tool that lets me do this from the command line. So you can, you can write this code in any language that you want. So if you want to work in Java, that's fine. If you want to work in JavaScript, that's fine. If you want to do it in C++, if you want to work in a language that you've never worked in before, maybe you want to try Rust or you want to try working with Nim or you want to try, um, <laughs> I have no idea. I don't care what you build it in. So you could decide to pick a language that you're working on in other courses. So if you're currently working on JavaScript and you want to get even stronger with JavaScript and Node, then maybe do that. Or you might decide that you want to challenge yourself to learn something brand new that you've never done. That's fine too. So I've given you a kind of a step-by-step -step list of all the things that you have to be able to do with your tool. And so you have to implement all of these required features. So you can go through the list and see all of the required features of things that I want you to do. And then I also want you to pick two optional features that you're gonna to add to your project as well. So I've given you some ideas here. You can go through this list and you can also do number seven, which is you could decide to do something completely different that I haven't thought of. And all I ask is that you talk to me on Slack and just say, I'm thinking about implementing this feature. Is this okay? And I, I, I'm sure it will be, but I just want to, I want to communicate and be, make sure that we're um, on the same page. So I want you to dive into this. You could start today. You should start today. And I want you to get this thing written quickly. So the first release is not about writing perfect code. The first release is about getting you to get some software built quickly. You've got two weeks, you've got a set of criteria, and I want you to set up a project on GitHub. I want you to get comfortable working with Git. I want you to build this command line tool, and I want you to make it so that um, I have a static site generator that we can work with. In the labs that follow, I'm going to have you go back to this project again and again and improve it. So we're gonna, this is gonna be an opportunity for you to become an open source maintainer. I want you to start a project and then you're gonna get people to collaborate with you. You're gonna have people send you pull requests. You're gonna fix other people's code. They're gonna fix your code. We're gonna uh, add testing to it. We're gonna add continuous integration. We're gonna do automated deployments. We're gonna do all kinds of things. So you are welcome to collaborate with other people in the class on this. I want you to write the code, but you're welcome to talk to each other. It's not cheating if you talk to each other and help each other figure out how to do certain things. Um, you know, use Slack and, uh, and GitHub and talk to each other. And that's great. That's what I want you to do in a course about open source. So you can see the whole list of requirements that are here. And when you're done, I want you to edit this page and add another line to the bottom of this table. So your name, your, I want you to write a blog post that is a release that talks about what you're releasing. I want you to give me your GitHub repo. I want you to, to show me a sample site that has been built using your static site generator and what language it was built in. And that's how you hand this thing in. So for the most part, the way you're going to hand stuff in is you're going to edit this wiki and you're going to add links to things on GitHub. You're mostly going to put things on GitHub and then send me a link via the wiki. And that's how stuff, uh, stuff will get handed in. So, all right, that is lots. <laughs> that's lots of stuff that we've covered. Your first release, if you look here, is worth 10% of your grade and it's due on the 17th, as I've said. So get going on all of the material for this week. If you have any questions, if you're feeling nervous, if you're not sure how to tackle something, I want you to know 
that I don't expect you to be good at this stuff yet. I expect you to try. I expect you to get involved and do it. And if you find that you're, if you find yourself putting it off, know that that's often a mechanism. That kind of procrastination is often a mechanism that we use when we're feeling nervous about something. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to write a static site generator. I haven't done this before. I, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to leave that till next week. I don't want you to approach it that way. I want you to get going on these things. I want you to ask whenever you have problems, be communicative, um, be open and try and get involved in working in open source with us. So I'm thrilled that you're in the course. Can't wait to meet you on, on Slack and for us to get started uh, doing some interesting open source together.